everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to the channel and my craft table. Today is exciting because we're going to start crafting for Halloween. As always, I will be linking the design space file that I have all of the images in, in the description below, as well as a list of all supplies and materials that I use. We will be using adhesive vinyl and my favorite glitter iron-on. So without further ado, if you're like me and can't wait to craft for Halloween, leave me in the description below a bat, pumpkin, or ghost emoji, and let's go ahead and get started. For our first craft today, I'm actually going to be repurposing a little bucket that my daughter and I got at one, our farmer's market one weekend. Mm -hmm. I decided to save it because I thought it would be a really fun way to put candy in for my classroom. Um, believe it or not, high schoolers absolutely love candy. So I figured while we are doing um, activities, games, reviews, etc., that I could have a bucket full of candy, and but I wanted to decorate it, so I didn't want it to be plain. And then I thought this really cute little SVG that says trick or treat would be perfect, some bats. And then I will be putting, uh, I'll be layering some vinyl over here in the corner um, we're going to be putting some candy corn and uh, that's actually a good debate. How many of you like candy corn? So I will admit I like candy corn. I don't like too much of it, but I do like it. Um, so I actually really like the candy corn that is um, the, the one that has the chocolate top instead of the yellow top. To me, it's not as sweet. Anyway. <laughs> I like, I like that particular candy corn best. So um, I decided to use that little image. What I've done is this I got out of design space. I thought it was great and that it would just do a fun job on the bucket. And then I found some candy corn. Now the candy corn um, SVG is layered. And what I did is in design space, I made sure, well, I duplicated it so that I had three copies of the design and then I contoured out uh, the other two colors that I didn't want so that I could basically have everything in place where it needed to go and of course this one is giving me a little bit of trouble here but what I wanted to do was be able to just layer everything all at one time and put it on the uh, little bucket all at one time so basically i have the white layer i don't know if you can see those it's kind of hard there we go and they are in a particular place so i contoured out the yellow and the orange and then i did attach for these three so they should be in the place where they need to be and before i weed these other two sometimes i have found if i burnish down my vinyl before I weed it, it sometimes does a little better. So, okay, then we have our orange layer and hopefully the orange layer stays where it needs to. And unlike the white that want it to come up, okay. And these are just really small, okay? That almost looks like a little pumpkin face right there. So we've got the orange layer, we've got the white layer, and then now we will have the yellow layer. So my, uh, my husband is not necessarily a fan of candy corn. Um, he likes licorice. I don't like licorice. So it's kind of fun at Halloween and at Easter. We actually um, like different kinds of candy. So we don't have to worry about the other person um, eating the other person's candy altogether. And then of course our daughter, she also has her own particular kinds of candy. Okay, so I'm actually gonna try a new transfer tape, well new to me and I am hoping that I like it. Um, this is Caesar um, transfer tape 
and let's see. Let's do, okay, let's do the yellow layer. Anyway, I got this little sheet of it and I wanted to try it out. So I thought today would be a good day to try it out. My regular transfer tape is getting low and I will have to make a purchase here soon. Okay, I'm gonna use this to help me out with some of these designs today. This is an, an old piece of a mat and it's still sticky, but it just, it wasn't doing the job as far as sending it through the machine. So I keep it in case I need it to hold down something like this, where I can literally just get this vinyl on here and the bottom one won't move. Put it like that. Oh, okay. That did well. And then I'm going to peel that up and I'm going to burnish this. These two layers are now where they need to be together. And I'm gonna... So I paused my video recorder and I'm hoping that whatever was going on is like done whatever with whatever it was doing. So I apologize for that. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back in. I'm going to put this down and Next, I'm going to, hopefully I got these little white ones back where they needed to go earlier. So it looks like that one is okay. All right. And then I'm going to have to move this one around a little bit. So then here is my candy corn. They look pretty good. Okay, so next I'm going to bring in the trick or treat. And I'm just going to pop that candy corn like right there. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to cut one more piece of this transfer tape that I am trying out today and see how I like it. I do have my other roll in case I'm not really digging it, but Then we're going to put this on our bucket and call that good. Whoa, very staticky. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to put that down. And then what I'm going to do is I am going... Here is a good question to put an answer down in the comments. Are you someone who likes to trick or treat with your kids or whoever? Do you like to go trick or treating? Or do you like to be the one that stays at home handing out the candy? So I was always the one that went trick or treating and so a group of us, we would get our kids together and we would go trick-or-treating together. And then, well, my daughter is 12. She's about at that age where trick-or-treating is gonna go by the wayside. I don't know. Her and her group of friends, they're still able to they are still able to trick or treat and we go as a big group. Wow. Okay. So I don't know if I like this transfer tape, but I'm going to go ahead and see this one through because I'm wondering if it's me or if it's the transfer tape, but it could be me. <laughs> it could be me my error oh, oh my goodness so something too is i'm starting to wonder if 
these vinyls are actually, you know, where I've got to do a little bit of little bit of surgery over here, move it around back where it needs to go. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and let's go ahead and clean off the surface of this little bucket here. And I'm going to grab my little cup holder thing here like this. Perfect. Okay, all I'm going to do now is place this on here and I'm going to be very mindful. So I'm just going to push my finger down in the middle and then work my way outwards. Sometimes I think it might be better... Um, to use transfer tape, like from one company, use their transfer tape with their vinyl. Because um, it's just been in the last, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks where I'm having trouble, but it could be, like I said, it could be user error. All right, hopefully this will peel off really nicely. Oh, just like that, there we go. Okay, and then we will pull up our little candy corns. Okay, that, that did well as well. <laughs> All right, so this is craft number one, cute little trick or treat bucket and we added the little candy corns um, and like I was trying to say earlier when my camera started to wig out is each color layer is um, is attached so that basically you can apply them to each other and then apply them all at one time by just matching up their edges okay so there we go, trick or treat. That looks so cute. That actually looks cuter than I thought it would. All right, let's move on to craft number two. Okay, craft number two is going to be my glitter iron-on. I found in my stash, when I was looking for scraps um, for some projects, I found some more of my absolute favorite glitter iron-on. So we are going to use the glitter iron on today and we're going to not I it's kind of I guess it is kind of like a reverse canvas in a way um I got this little set there it comes separately but I got these at Walmart and this is just a little stand goes like that kind of cute and then this is the canvas that sits on it like this okay um but I like this white side, but this, this looks so good. So what I thought I would do is I kind of tested it out earlier is that it, I think that this will come off. At least I'm hoping that it will. So what I thought I would do would be to remove the canvas from the frame, iron on to the white part here, and then attach it back using um, I'll just use hot glue for that, and in fact, I probably need to heat up my hot glue. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up my Easy Press Mini, and I'm going to put it on medium. All right, so let's give this a go, see what happens. All right. I've been, I bought this a while back and I was kind of wondering what I should do with it. And then I saw that um, this SVG that I have. And so it looks like this is going to just peel up nicely, just like this. I bet you I could even use 
my Easy Press Mini to loosen. I think it's just on here with some sort of adhesive. So I probably could just pull it off um, or, you know, loosen the adhesive using my Easy Press Mini, which I might do here when, once it heats up a little bit. So we are going to take this in a new direction because this is not wanting to reverse we or you know come off like the other reverse canvases I've done, which is okay. We will just go ahead and put it on the front. Um, it really is just you know a small little thing, but it'll be so cute. So I'm just going to go ahead and just change direction, which will be totally fine. So this design right here is going to be so cute. It's going to be um, 31 October. And let's see, there we go. The only thing about glitter iron-on that I wish was slightly different was the fact that the cut lines, sometimes, sometimes the cut lines can be a little hard to see. But what I do love about it is that super intricate designs do really well with the glitter iron-on. For instance, I have this tiny little spider over here and it's gonna just turn out so nice. Whereas if I was using adhesive vinyl, yeah, that little spider would probably get lost. And this really is a gorgeous glitter iron on. I will link where I got this down in the description. Um, I ordered it from Expressions Vinyl. And if I remember correctly, I believe this is the, um, this is Caesar glitter. I love it. In fact, I'm, I'm, I did find some, but now I need to order some more. So, and I'm just being really gentle because of my word here. I just don't want to, you know, be stronger than I think. And then rip or you know something because this word October here is very delicate um, so I just want to make sure I'm careful with that and then that we have the bird's feet all right so yeah look at the glitter oh y'all this I know I say it every time I use it but look at that it's just gorgeous Okay, so now I have to weed out my little middles here for the word. I am excited about crafting for Halloween. I have been weeding for, well, I've been waiting for September to come around so that I could craft um, for fall and, and, of course, Halloween. So we are finally here, and I think this year... Um, I, I think I'm just going to craft craft away and I'm going to take some things to my classroom and some things here at, you know, at home. So, but that's kind of fun because I don't ever have to worry about um, crafting too much because I have two places that I can use to showcase my little craft stuff. Oh, and okay, so this particular SVG, I actually found this SVG on Design Bundles, and I thought it was super cute. And then, and I put it in my little wish list, and I thought, okay, well, if I don't find anything in Cricut Design Space then, that I like better, then I will go back to Design Bundles, and I will get that particular one. And lo and behold, this sweet designer, whoever this designer is, 
Um, they have let Cricut Design Space also have this, say, and it's the exact same designer, so I'm very thankful that they have shared their design with Cricut Design Space as well because I was able to go ahead and get this get this design through Cricut Design Space and then because it's in Design Space already uh, now I do pay for access so um, I do pay for access but basically I was able to get this through Cricut Design Space and leave it in the file so that you could also recreate but look at that isn't that that is so fun okay let's I'm gonna have to do a little bit of recovery with this um, with this little frame and I think this one is probably gonna go in my classroom and so I'm not overly concerned about this bottom edge here I can just put it on the bottom and let it just hang out and this hot glue will hide a multitude of my little sins for trying to take this off <laughs> oh goodness okay so this will be the bottom and I do need to put this back together here I don't think my high schoolers well I don't know that they will necessarily care and I know for a fact they will not go up and manhandle it to see where I have messed up the design. <laughs> uh, it will be fun. Let me fix it right here too. Or I'll seal this actually. That's what I think I'll do. Okay. And I think down here in this corner... I don't know. I guess it gives it a little spooky quality. That's what I'll go with. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell myself. That my my big mistake created a spooky quality to this project. And now my husband, my husband would notice. My daughter, probably not. But my husband, he would be like, what would you do to the frame? He's so funny. He's very detail-oriented. Okay, so... Back to crafting, I am going, I'm going to, because my idea, and by the way, this is clean, but it is, it's just a little stained with some ink. Okay, I love these, and these are from Amazon, and I need to buy more. I, I don't know where, I got this one, and, and I, I don't remember if it like came with something or I don't know but I do know that you can get these on Amazon and I have a, um, some in my cart right now because they are fantastic okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my little travel lint roller that I'm using up here and I'm just gonna go over this Okay, and then we will put this down as close to the middle as possible. So now I have to bring it down just a little. I think that looks, I think that looks good. Let me just do this. So the good thing about iron-on is that you can pick it back up and put it where you need it. So the October is a little bit over this way, but it's also over on that end, you know, kind of in. So side to side, it is good. And um, I, I do like the vertical placement. I don't know that I want to worry about that. Looks like we have five eighths. And this is a little more, I'm not going to worry about that, but I am going to make sure the top is about the same. Okay. All right. I can at least get things straight. 
Maybe I mess up the little canvas, but I can at least get things straight. Okay, and then I'm gonna have that. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get this pressed on here. And I would say anytime, if you're new to iron on, that it's also HTV, same thing, that you definitely want to monitor the project. I'm gonna I'm going to put my hand behind this towel so that I have a little bit of, you know, like a more firm surface. But the Easy Press Mini is one of my best purchases, and I held out for a while. I used my household iron. Um, okay, so what I like about this glitter, by the way, is it's already coming off of the, of separating from the sheet. So that's one thing I love about it is because I don't have to pull the sheet necessarily. I can just lift the sheet because it's already off. And actually, I don't even need to do a second press. I'll let that cool for a second. I feel like I am all over the place today, so I apologize. If you are just joining me for the first time, I really am very put together. So being a math teacher, I'm quite organized and I'm quite systematic. But today, I don't know, maybe I just need some more coffee. Okay, so then this is what it will look like when I set it on my little counter. I'm also thinking that later before I really display it I might paint this black I don't know so I'm not going to paint it on screen or even paint it during the filming of this video so if you have an opinion I would love to hear it would you paint the easel black do you think it would make a difference or is this good so um let's do a little vote down in the description below um you can just tell me whether black or natural, and I'm leaning toward painting it black, but if you guys think it looks better natural, then by all means, let me know down in the comments what you think, and I will probably go with the majority rules. All right, that is craft number two. Let's move on to our third craft. Next craft, I have a um, this is called Wood Hanging Blackboard. Very descriptive, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, this is a um, kind of like a chalkboard sign. I got this at Dollar Tree and I did not do anything to it. I will be just cleaning the surface here in a moment with my rubbing alcohol. And then I have my white um, vinyl. I have weeded some of it already because the only thing I have left are the insides of these letters. Um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't spending too much time on camera weeding, but it, this is such a cute design. Um, this is definitely going to the classroom and I'm excited about this. In fact, I really, I think this is probably really the first year that I will be, um, well, I guess you could say decorating my classroom. Um, sometimes I put little festive things up, but I'm excited about putting some really fun things in my classroom as well as my space here at home. So anyway, it says, um, it says come in for a spell and it's got a bat and some spider, a witch's hat, a broom. Um, I love the lettering. And the lettering has, you know, these little accents. It's got some stars and some little circles. So that's why I weeded some of it out. Not to mention it is white on white. So sometimes that can be a little hard for the camera to pick up. At the time of this recording, the new Beetlejuice is coming out. So if you're old enough to remember the original, you are my people. So my daughter is funny. So 
we had gone to the movies and we saw the course the the trailer and of course it's you know gonna be my birthday so her and I are gonna have a mom daughter date and go see Beetlejuice so by the time this comes out that movie will it'll have been out for a little bit and um, so yesterday when we came well yeah we came home from running errands and she was looking for a movie for us to watch together and the original Beetlejuice showed up on, on the TV so of course we watch it and uh, it was so funny watching her reaction to the clothing and the hairstyles I mean like seriously I forgot Alec Baldwin was in that movie y'all he was so um, young and Gina Davis you know I always thought she was just gorgeous and her hair oh you know big 80s hair with you know the curls and the hairspray and all that and so when I t my daughter's face and then when I told her that well that's how people dressed back then she goes your hair wasn't like that was it it's like actually yeah it was and the more poofy it was the better you should have seen her face it was priceless so oh that actually we did really easy so let me clean this off and I'm not going to spray the alcohol directly on here. I'm just going to do a light spray on my paper towel and then just wipe over it because I don't want to douse it and have the, the chalkboard paint come off. You know, you never know if it's going to come off or stay on. So there's that. Now I'm going to use paper transfer tape because this design um, is going on wood. Well, I say wood. It's going like on a on a painted surface. So I want to make sure that I don't um, pull up anything. This is what I usually use for wood surfaces. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna lay this down. I you know I wish this was a little more. Uh, transparent but I think for this design it'll be okay but I am going to cut off excess actually let me burnish it and then I will cut off excess so I use this transfer tape when I need something that's really low tack look how smooth this vinyl is laying down awesome okay so let me trim this down though because you know when you're putting it on your blank you you don't need a ton of excess hanging out okay so here is you can see it now look at that it's so fun and um let's see you what I'm going to use the grid lines of my glass mat because that really is key for me so I need about an eighth of an inch on either side and then I just got to make sure it's fairly even like when I say even I mean level sorry okay I think that is good and since this is going in my classroom um, you know, if the kids want to critique that it is not perfectly straight, well, I will just tell them that it's art. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that and see if that was enough. Yep, there we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to pull this back. This is the cutest little design. And I, I just got this. In fact, all the designs that tip from today, like I got all of them um, through Design Space. And I will, I know I keep saying it, but I will link the Design Space file down in the comments for you. Um, I really like doing that. So I, I hope it is something that is helpful to you all as crafters is to have it there for you. And, you know, if I've done any manipulating of the design, then um, 
it's already done for you. You don't have to worry about um, manipulating anything other than size, other than size. Oh my goodness. This is gonna look so good. Now I can't put it on my door outside my classroom because I am in a modular and the the winter weather would, told, well, I say winter weather, any rain or something like that would totally destroy this. I don't think it will snow for Halloween this year, but you never know up here. It's, you know, you never know. It has snowed on Halloween. We have trick-or-treated in snow boots. Hey, let's move on to our, I guess, fourth craft. And I'm excited about this one. Um, I have had, well, I'll have to turn it this way. So this is also from the Dollar Tree. It's one of those wooden um, vertical deals. And I've actually had this for quite a while and I just haven't known what to do with it. So today um, I decided to paint it black and I've just painted it black on the front. I will put this back on here and it just, it's like shoelaces. So I just pulled it out and set it aside and then I painted it. So this is um, a, this is so fun. These are going to be some little ghosts. So I've, it's got a total of five ghosts and they just kind of hang around the edge of the, they hang around the edge of the board. And then you have the hay boo in the middle. I'm gonna set this board aside and we can go ahead and weed these out. And I do need to pull up design space just so I can see where the ghosts go. So this is, these are the, the letters and I really like this font. I mean, it's, I don't wanna say it's spooky. I don't know that it is necessarily a spooky font, but it is Halloween. Like it definitely, speaks, um, kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Scooby-Doo back in the day where the letters were a little bit spooky wavy, but still fun and readable. Okay, so this is Hey Boo, and I'm gonna cut it apart because it's going to, the Boo will go underneath. Okay, and in Design Space, what I did is, um, I have the Hey Boo and I attached it so it printed just or cut just like this. And then for the, the Boo, I selected those and I hit attach. So these are not attached together in Design Space, but these three letters are attached. Those three letters are attached. And then of course the ghosts are all separate. So for the little ghost, and these are super easy to weed. They, you li I'm literally just going around this, the uh, outline and pulling out the eyes. This would be a great porch sign, like a really big one. Um, definitely. And it would be easy to do. You could make this as big or, in my case, I made it kind of little. Okay, these ghosts were super easy to weed. I definitely am going to be using my paper transfer. And I, I just used the, um, just the cheap Apple Barrel black paint from Walmart. And um, believe it or not, they, I, they did not have any black chalk paint that day. So I didn't want to wait around. And so I just went ahead and, and bought what was there so you could definitely do chalk paint. That would be a good option as well. You could do the ghost in black and the sign in white. It really is, you know, sky's kind of the limit. You could even use different colors like pink and mint, purple. You could make a really funky um, Halloween sign using different colors. I've always been a you know, pretty traditional Halloween color person, but I've seen so many people really do some great, wonderful projects using like 
like a light pink and a and an orange, almost like a like a sherbet. All right. Hopefully everything is furnished down well. And I can just peel up these little backers. I know that I am a well, I, I think I'm a slow crafter. I really enjoy the process, but this is so quick and easy. Um, I don't think that any of these crafts today have been any that are that are not um, quick and easy crafts. So now I am just going to cut these apart, cut them apart one at a time because I'm going to put them kind of where they go. Let's see. In fact, let's start from the bottom. Just so you know, in Design Space, it's one long thing. Um, you can totally resize it. And I'm just using my finger to burnish over the ghost. And I'm going to pull up the little transfer tape. <gasps> Look, he's so cute. I love it. So this will go next to that ghosty head just like that. And it's going to just be in the middle. There we go. So feel free to leave it all together as one big long sign. I just did it this way. I probably can't say I had a good reason. <laughs> but you know, that's the fun of crafting. The, the fun of crafting is that you can you can adjust and do what what works for you in your circumstances with your supplies. So that is one thing I love about crafting. All right, so this is going to go against this edge over here and it's kind of, and I, you know, I'm kind of referencing design space, but to be honest, I mean, you could totally, you know, put your ghost where you want them. This really is cute. I think I might be taking this one to my classroom. It's just fun. I could even put it in the window facing out. That would be hilarious. Go ahead and just get the hay on there. Oh yeah, that's so But see what I mean about these letters? They remind me, I don't know why. They just, they remind me of Scooby-Doo from when I was growing up. That was one of my favorite shows. Um, I was always kind of nerdy and quiet, like a bookworm, like, like Velma, but I always wanted to be Daphne. Okay, so see how this paper transfer tape um, doesn't pull up this paint? And this paint is not sealed. Like, that's why I love it, is because um, it works really good with your paper crafts and your painted wood projects. So, all right, this, okay, now this is hilarious. See that little eye right there? If I put this ghost in that corner, I think, I could be wrong, but I think the ghost lines up with that little little dot. I don't know. Oh, and here's another thing. You don't even have to use your scissors. You can tear the transfer tape if you need to. That is another reason why I like it. Okay, let's see if the eye falls where that little hole is or if I have to make a little adjustment. So it looks pretty good, like right here. Maybe I'll grab my true control knife and just kind of push that in there, kind of cut it just a little bit. Wow, that is, that is awesome because I didn't think that that would happen. Well, I will be having some more Halloween videos coming out and um, something that I think is fun 
is, let's see, just, okay, that goes there. We, um, we always get together, you know, the family, we get together and we, we have a theme of dress up. Now this year, I'm not really digging the theme. It's minions. So I don't know. I, I don't know that I want to dress up like minions. So who knows? One more little ghosty, and then we could put the hanger back on. I don't know. Maybe I'll just make a shirt. Do you dress up for Halloween, or do you just like do a shirt, or maybe not at all? So I I don't know how I feel about the minion thing. So I might um, I might be doing my own thing and just not not matching. Um, I think I'm going to make a Halloween town, uh, I think I'm going to make a Halloween town, um, shirt or something. I love that. Have you seen that movie before? I love Halloween town with Debbie Reynolds. So, okay. This turned out way better than I thought it would. Actually, everything today is turning out much better than I thought it would. This is so cute. Again, you could do it like a big porch sign like this. That's so cute. I love it. Okay, let's do let's do our final craft of the day. So for our final craft of the day, um, I again have another wood piece from the Dollar Tree. It's just their wood plaque is what they call it. It's pretty much uh, at least without the top here, without these, this little area, it's like a seven by seven and a half. But on the other side is this. So I decided to, um, I decided to leave this side alone because I could do something else on this another time. But on this side here, I painted two coats of white chalk paint in the snow white color. And then I took, oh, and I did take the little, um, the little string out and I'll put that back. But I found in Design Space the funnest SVG. Now, in my particular file, I did adjust it just a bit. So in order to make the design look good, I had to, you know, keep the size reasonable. But then the this black frame around the design was really thin. And so what I did is I grabbed some rectangles and I made tall, skinny rectangles that went with the, the width or the height, whichever side I was working on. And I duplicated it so that I could put it on the, the opposite side. And then I well I put them next to the actual picture and then I welded it. So when you go into design space, just know that like I've already done that part, but you could always slice off and make the perimeter frame thinner if you wanted to. Okay, let me show you the best part of this SVG. It is a cat that looks like he, it looks like he or she is just so over a whole lot of things. And I just, I felt that to my core. I don't know about you guys, being a mom and a wife and a teacher is, you know, awesome. But then sometimes I'm just really, I'm really over things and I just need a, like a little alone time. But I mean, uh, let me, let me do this. This is just crazy that this cat invoked so much emotion. Look at that face with those little whiskers. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I guess I'm going on and on and on. So I am going to go ahead and finish weeding this out. 
Okay, there is our design. Doesn't that look super cute? I love it. And again, I just love that cat's face. But the spider and the bats are so cute and the webs and the pumpkins. You could really take this in so many directions. You could cut this out of cardstock and you could do like a layering effect. You could paint a background like some funky color and then put this over. Um, you could turn this, you could make it small and turn it into a shaker card. This SVD has a lot of potential. I'm gonna get this on here. And like I said, we, we're gonna use our paper transfer tape and it's gonna go right there. We get this down and the string back on. We will have our project showcase. Then we can decide, well, all of us, we can all decide which one is our favorite. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to do like two um, little strips because it's not wide enough. And that's okay. Okay, that'll work. And then we'll just burnish all of this down front and back really, really, really well. There we go. Okay, bring this in. So again, I'm gonna use my glass mat as um, to help with placement. And basically, I just want, we're gonna do about a half an inch on each side. Perfect. So on the bottom, it's barely, you know, it's not very far from the edge, but along the top and along the sides, I've got half an inch. So if you were to use this same deal from Dollar Tree, then just know that it's size ready to go. All right, I think that is more than enough. And now, Oh my goodness, look at that, that's so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this transfer tape and I'm just gonna kind of seal the end. I don't really want a lot of bulk, I just want to keep, keep it together. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I should be able to send this through without, yeah, see, now it didn't want to come unraveled. The other one had plastic on it. This one did not. And then this comes off and we just do the little knot again. What a fun way to, uh, you know, do this sign differently than, than normal. And then I still have this side over here that I can do something with. I don't know what, but you know, now I have a, a double sign. Totally use a thin ribbon, but that is this sign here. And that looks so cute. And that was actually really easy to weed. So that don't let this um, design uh, overwhelm or intimidate you. It was really easy to weed. So, okay, I'm going to clean up really fast, bring in all of our projects so we can have our project showcase and decide which one is our favorite. Okay, these are all of the crafts that we made today together for Halloween. This was a fun video to put together. 
these graphs came out so much better than I had in my mind and um, I'm just so pleased. So the first one we did was we just, I repurposed this bu bucket and I did the trick or treat SVG and then I added some candy corn, um, little candies down here. This right here was scrap vinyl, so a perfect way to use those tiny little pieces. And this was just adhesive vinyl. So that'll be great fun in my high school math classroom. Maybe I can bribe them to do more math. The next thing we did was um, we, I was going to attempt the reverse canvas, but this I had to change course and just put it on the front, which is okay. Don't be afraid to change your project um, if it's not going in the direction that you want. But this is gorgeous with the glitter. I mean, wow, that is so beautiful. And I love the the whimsy and the nostalgia just makes me think of Edgar Allan Poe or Coraline. I just love it. And then um, again, let me know down in the comments, do you think that I should paint this black or should I leave it as the natural wood? So let me know down in the comments your thoughts. I would love to know and then I will probably go with what you guys think. The next craft we did is this one. So this is definitely going in my classroom and it's just a little chalkboard sign from, or blackboard really, but chalkboard sign from Dollar Tree. And this actually was quite easy to weed. The most intricate part was right here, but those little spots came up super nice. So this was so fun. And this will look really cute hanging from the front of my board. So I love it. And, um, you could always paint, take the sticker off and paint this as well and come up with something for the back here, which is what I will probably do. I will probably put something for fall on the back and then change this to go, you know, the other direction so that I can change it up in my classroom for fall. Um, or I actually could even wait till Christmas. Um, then we have this Hey Boo. I'm thinking this one will go to my classroom as well. This was just one of those little boards from the Dollar Tree. This took the, I took it and I painted it. Just, I just used regular black paint and white vinyl. You could do the reverse. You, on these, you could totally do white vinyl. I mean, black vinyl on white backgrounds like this one. Okay. But I think these three will go to my classroom. They're just so fun. And then our last craft was this one. So I just took the wood plank plaque that we always see at Dollar Tree. I painted the back side with two coats of chalk paint. And then I put this fun design on it. This is so fun. I love this. And then, of course, I still have this side here to work with, which, you know, is great. That is a fun way to stretch your crafting dollars is to use both sides of your signs. And, you know, I really love all of these, so it's kind of hard to pick a favorite. Um, normally, I would tell you that the glitter iron on is my favorite. And nine times out of 10, anything with glitter iron on, especially the black glitter iron on, or um, I have a like a very deep, um, I did it in a fall video a while back, but the the deep orange glitter, they, they just are my favorite. But I think today I'm going to have to go with this one. I just love the little faces and this one right here. You know, I just love that little black cat and I can just, I feel his expression to my soul. Um, it is such a crazy time of year being the third week of school with, um, you know, a busy schedule and uh, everything. And I'm just so excited for all of the holiday season coming, but I am also very tired. So. This is my favorite. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. And don't forget that I will be linking the Design Space file 
for you so you can recreate these as well. I uh, hope that you found this video helpful and inspiring today and got you excited for crafting for the holidays, for Halloween. And um, if you are not a Halloween uh, crafter, um, you can also do these kinds of ideas with fall crafts or Christmas, you know, whatever season that you do craft for. So anyway, I hope that you found it inspiring and fun. Halloween to me is just a fun time um, where adults can be like little children again and just enjoy um, some whimsy. If you found this inspiring or helpful in any way, don't forget to click that like button. And also, if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. You can hit that notification bell and get notified when I post again. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.